um, so in last what to discuss yeah good morning yes so in last class we seen right like how to get this uh, account for amazon cloud okay have you tried this okay okay so any issues by launching instances okay Fine, you can try this one. You can try it. Okay. Yeah. So create your own account. Okay. So then you can launch instances. I said right to practice DevOps, we need uh, any uh, cloud platform. Okay, it could be Amazon or Google, but we need a cloud. Yes. You can make a try. And whoever missed the last class, no, no need to worry about this. Okay, I'll show you how to get the instance. You can try it. Tell me what are the steps to follow to get instance? You can even uh, have better to maintain my running nodes. Okay, I'll share my documents to you, no worries. So if you have any running nodes, you can manage. Okay, yep. Tell me what are the steps to follow to get these Linux machines? I said, right, first create. An Amazon account, then go with uh, EC2 service, select EC2, then do launch, launch instance. Now I can follow all these steps. Okay, let me go with this. I'll show this process to you. Launch instance. Next word. Select a machine, some Red Hat machine. T2 micro. And step two, what you specify? See, in step one, we have selected Amazon machine image, right? In step two, choose an instance type. Okay. I said, right, for practice, you can go for T2 micro instance. You can have a one CPU, one GB RAM. Yeah. You can try this. Next one in step three, configure instance details, right? Here you can find number of instances. Yes, I need one instance. Okay, I want to get one instance. Uh, next, you have a storage. I think we discussed this. You can have a default storage of 10 GB. Okay, you can even extend. You can extend up to 30 GB. Okay, yep. And we can set a tag. What is tag we discuss? The tag is a label, right? Yes, it's a label, it's a machine for Red Hat. I'll use the same label. And security group, how will you define security group? It is a firewall, right? It's a firewall to our machine, okay. And you can create a security group and we can use the same group for all instances, okay? So you want to create a new group. For example, I said my group name is something uh, DevOps, okay? I'll just go with the label DevOps. And I can use the same group for all instances. See this one, let me go with. And default protocol SSH, we discussed for Linux machines, we connect using SSH. What is such port number? Yeah, 22, yes. You can even add additional protocol that is optional, okay? You can add all TCP, HTTP, HTTPS, okay? Yeah. And what is the source to select? We discuss it, right? We can choose, yeah, anywhere. Just go with anywhere. So it's our new group name, DevOps. And do review and launch instance. So you're going to launch a Red Hat machine 
with three to micro configuration do launch and you can use existing keys and you can even create a new key pair no worries suppose my new key pair is uh, devops it's my key pair okay and you have an option download key pair so what is the key will download for us devops dot pem file pm file yes dot pem the launch instance Can you see this? A new Red Hat machine is launched. So you have an option view instance. Just go with view instance. Set a label for this. It is Red Hat. And what is machine state? It is pending. Yes, fine. Uh, let it launch this instance. Okay, fine. The question is how to connect with the machine. So last class, what is session we are seeing? Yes, we are seeing Git Bash, right? Have you tried the Git Bash? Have you downloaded Git Bash? Okay, fine. Yeah, thank you. So you can just search with the label Git for Windows. So already we are seeing this process. How will download Git Bash? You can search with the label called Git for Windows. Git for Windows. You can go with this option. You can, you can have an option to download, right? So let it download this file. So who missed the last class, just do this process. We need this interface called Git Bash. How will you get Git Bash? Using this option, Git for Windows. So once you install this package, so you can find this option can find it in git bash we have another advantage uh, we can run linux commands in windows platform see what is my current platform windows right i'm using windows windows 7 but i can run linux commands in windows using git bash let me select this git bash okay we discussed this interface is git bash right yep yeah. and tell me where we are we are in desktop, but where to go? Where to go? To downloads. Yeah, CD, change directory, change directory, downloads. And what the symbol denotes? We discuss. It is. You have seen last class, right? I said to you, it is a home directory. Yes, home. So, at home, I have a downloads, okay? So why we need to move to downloads? What's the reason? So we have a key in downloads, right? So I'll just go to downloads. Just confirm the key is here or not. Yes, we have a key devops.pem. Tell me how to connect. See, we have interface and we have a server. And what is server state here? It is running, running state, okay? So let me go with this. Do connect. I said you have to copy this whole command. Okay, you have to copy this. Yep. Yeah. Just see this one. You can just copy this whole command. Here you can find uh, SSH. Yeah, tell me what this command specifies here. I said right, the single command can have a complete information. What will you get? SSH, secure shell. Next word, devops.pem. What is devops.pem? It is your key. It's a key to connect. EC to user. It is username at the rate. Host name, host name or server name. Okay, I said the single command can have a complete information. So to which server you want to connect? Who is a default user? What is the key you want to use? Next one, what is the protocol you want to use? SSH, yes. For Linux machine, you will use SSH, secure shell. Okay, so now let me copy this whole command. 
I'll get this whole command and go with git bash, just copy and paste it. Okay. So it will automatically connect, say yes. Okay. See this? So you are connected to Amazon Cloud instance, right? Yeah. Uh, do you remember what is the command we discussed to find the machine type? What's the command? Yeah, hyphen I denotes your key. Yeah, what is the key you are given that? Yes. Next one, uh, how to get the machine type? <clears throat> I said that this is Red Hat, right? How will confirm this is a Red Hat machine? We discussed one command in last class. What is it? Cat etc. OS release. Yeah. You'll find, yes, this is a Red Hat machine. And this machine we are created in Amazon Cloud. Okay. Yeah. So you can try this one, you can try this process. But tell me, uh, can we launch Windows machines? Yes. Can you get this Windows machines? Yeah, fine. Yes, we can do it. We can do it. Tell me what is the process to get this Windows machine? You can just follow the same, same method, okay. Yes, for next class, you can try this one. Yeah, you can try Red Hat. Now you can even try Windows. I'll, I'll show you how to get it. Yeah, same process, do launch, launch instance. Okay. Let me try this Windows Server. Windows Server 2016 is there. Okay, fine. See, while selecting the machine, again, you have to confirm this that machine can have a free tire eligibility. Okay, yeah. So don't go with this, this combinations, Windows with some SQL server, okay. So don't go with these combinations. We need a pure Windows based machine, okay. Can you see this Windows server 2016 base? Yes, I need this machine, okay. Yeah, let me try this one. Again, same process this is a T2 micro instance, okay. And tell me how many instances we have to create? Yes, for practice, go with one instance. Okay, one instance. Uh, do you remember for Linux machine, uh, how much storage will be allocated? Yes, yeah, 10 GB, yeah, 8 GB, fine. But for Windows, we have to allocate minimum uh, 30 GB. It's a minimum storage. Okay, even if you reduce this size to some 10 GB, by launching machine, it'll throw error. Okay, so don't make it 10, make it default 30 GB for Windows. And do tag. Mm, we already discussed a tag is only a label, right? Yes, we can add a label as a machine for Windows. It is optional, you can even ignore it, no worries, okay. Next one, security group. Yeah, when we discussed in, uh, in last class, a firewall, uh, like security group, we've seen if it is Linux machine, you can use SSH with the port number 22. And if it is Windows machine, we have to use, what's the port? I said, right, RDP, yeah, remote desktop. RDP, remote desktop protocol. And what's the port number? 3389, yes, okay. No? So for Linux machine, you can use SSH with the port, with the port 22, okay, for Linux. And for Windows machine, you can have a port 3389. Okay, so it's a default protocol is there. Okay, you can use this. Okay, no need to change this any protocol, it's a default one. 
okay you will find it you will find automatically okay yeah so i i won't change anything here next one review is windows server 2016 okay then do launch now you have to select a key pair tell me what key pair contains public key and private key right yes so let me choose my existing key pair my key pair is devops i'll go with devops key pair launch it so it's a new windows machine windows server 2016 fine machine will launch but the question is how to uh, connect with machine how you will connect how you will access tell me anyone okay okay putty can we use putty you know right windows is gui based graphical user interface okay so you cannot access through console right Yes. The same thing for Git Bash. Git Bash is a console. Yeah, you have some. Yes. See this one. You can access this Windows machine using uh, remote desktop connections. Remote desktop connections. Okay. See, machine is running. Is Windows Server sixteen is running? Okay. so how will access using remote desktop connections but the problem is windows machine uses uh, user id and password username and password default username is admin your default user is admin and do you have any password where is password question is clear so tell me how can you log into windows machine with user id and password in the earlier class we have seen linux machine how you log in linux machines using your keys right public and private keys but now we are using windows machine so it need username and password i said its username is administrator but where is password so we have to get password we have to get password see the process how to get password can you see this do connect can you find your username or dot default user administrator yes and you have to get password how you'll get password yes how you'll get password do you remember we discussed in last class your private keys will act like passwords you have to protect your private keys right so we are downloaded a key called devops devops dot m right so this private this key the private key we can convert into a password are you following or not so what is the key we are downloaded this key should convert into password is it clear reason is it is a windows is windows machine okay so i'll go with this option get password can you see your key devops dot pem pem file you can choose it choose this file mm, this file is in downloads just go to downloads you will find a key devops.pem say open now how to convert this pem file to password you have option here decrypt password what is it decrypt password yeah you can just select this option decrypt now can you find this password yes sir no see the process once again how will do it what is the option to select connect next word get password get password choose a file what is the file you have to select devops.pem the file is here in downloads select it and how to get into password what is the option you have to select decrypt password 
See, now you got password. Copy, you can just copy this password. It's clear? Yeah. And if you want to connect to this machine, you have option download, download remote desktop, remote desktop file. Download this. You can observe file will download for us. Say connect. Connect. Provide password. What is the password you got it? You can just provide. Say okay. Yes. So let me connect to this machine. What happened? Let me kill this process is not allowing to log in. Connect. Provide this password. Say okay. Say yes. Is it clear to you? So if it's a Linux machine, how you're connected? Yeah, with keys, right? Public and private keys. And this Windows machine, you can connect using your user ID and password. So you have to get this password. Okay, fine, let it uh, connect. Yeah, can you see this? You'll get your Windows Server 2000. 16. Okay, so you can try this process for next class. You can make it right. Okay, it's clear to you. you. Can observe you got this Windows machine in Amazon Cloud. And what is the storage for this? What is storage? Yeah, we are given 30 GB, right? Can you see? This 30 GB is allocated for C drive. Can you observe? Your 30 GB is given for C drive. If you want, you can attach some new volumes. No issues. I, I'll tell you later how to attach a new volume. For example, I need additional D drive, E drive. Yes, I can attach. Okay, yes. It's clear to you? Okay, yes. So you can try this process for next class. Try to get your own Linux machine and even Windows, Windows Server. Okay, fine, yeah. But in Windows Server, um, you have some limited resources, right? Okay, for example, I said I need some additional uh, one terabyte or something like additional 500 GB of hard disk. Yes, we have an option, I said, right? You have a uh, service called elastic block storage. So you can add some new new volumes. Okay, I'll show the process. Yes, I'll show it. Fine. So for next class, you can you can try this these two things: create a Red Hat machine and even Windows machine. Okay, fine. And we discuss in demo class. We have even other cloud platforms. 
other cloud platforms like in try this amazon cloud google cloud okay so to get this account for google cloud you can search with the label how you get the google cloud search with the label called google free tire right just go with google free tire so create your own account okay if you just see this um you'll get some 300 dollars of free credit in google cloud okay it, it, it is a free trial for us okay and you can use this credit for one year okay so how you created account for amazon the same way you can create account for google even google will ask you to provide debit or credit card details you have to provide and they will validate so once it's done you can access your google cloud and you can launch new instances okay no yep so once you practice amazon then you can try this google okay yep so let me log into my account my google cloud account i'll show this see it is uh when you create a new account for google cloud you will get uh, this home page okay is a home page uh here you will find your billing billing details here okay i said right for for the free tier you won't get any bills you won't get any bill here can you see it shows you only some zero okay for one year you won't get any bill okay yeah and you'll find your account details here your account information your project details okay and our requirement is what to launch instances to launch some linux machines or windows machines okay so earlier we seen for amazon cloud now we can see in google are you following or not we are in google cloud platform tell me in amazon cloud once you log into a machine uh what is service you will select which service ec2 right yeah you'll go with ec2 to launch instances and you can even observe here you'll find your own region say i'm selecting ec2 uh instances i can even find this uh user username right right and region like where i am creating instances can you observe i'm going to create all my instances in this region oh here region you will find all regions here all availability zones we'll call like availability zones you will find us east north virginia us east oh here north california you have multiple regions and this is my default region okay yep so all my instances will create here and i can even change these regions i can raise a request for this if you want to change i can even raise a request okay i can do it yep in the same way in google cloud you will find these options see in amazon what you selected which service ec2 service right in google cloud you can find this option compute engine where to go compute engine we have option vm instances go with vm instances so here you can launch your instances is clear to you okay yeah no it won't vary it won't okay fine so now i have option to create create instance select create in amazon cloud how you are launching launch instance right do launch here we have option create instance now can you find this uh options here on the instance name what is instance you want to create yes i said i need a centos machine centos machine label is optional now can you see these regions in amazon cloud while launching instance you can, you can observe your regions yeah regions are available to zones okay same in google cloud you will find your regions and zones can you see here 
US Central region, a navigability zone, okay? If you want, you can even change these regions. You can change your zones, okay? So you can use default regions, no need to change. In case you are unable to use the region, so then you can modify it, okay? And can, do you remember when Amazon Cloud, uh, see the machine type, T2 micro is a default one, right? What is T2 micro resources? It's only one CPU, one GB RAM, right? But Google Cloud, you'll find some N1 standard, N1 standard one. For this N1 standard, you'll get one CPU, 3.75 GB of RAM. See in DevOps, uh, we have some specific tools like uh, Kubernetes, okay, Docker, and we have some specific tools here, okay? And the tools need more resources. For example, go with Kubernetes. Kubernetes master need at least six GB of RAM. You need six GB of RAM. But tell me, can you get six GB here in Amazon Cloud? You can get it. You have to choose other like D2 large, D2 extra large, you have to select it, right? But in Google Cloud, you have an option, okay, to change it, to change the resources. Suppose I said 3.75 GB is not enough for us. You can just go for next, next ones. N1 standard two. You have a two core CPU, 7.5 GB of RAM. Okay, no? you can just change your resources. If you change the resources, it's going to vary this uh, amount. You can observe this amount. So they will charge some $24 per month, okay? And they won't calculate per month, they will calculate for hour, how many hours you are using is hourly billing. And no need to worry about this, that amount will deduct from your free trial. We'll get from your free trial credits. Are you following or not? You can even change resources, suppose I'll at least show some $24 per month, right? Now I'll change it to 7.5 GB. Now it shows different amount, $48. Okay, still as I said, right? They will calculate only in hours, how many hours you are using your machine. And this amount will deduct from your free credit. No need to worry about this, okay? Yep. So let me try this default one, okay? And next one, boot disk. Here you have option uh, to change the machine type. I will change to CentOS. I need CentOS machine, CentOS 7 machine, CentOS 7. And what's the default storage here? 20 GB. If you want, you can add, you can change it. No worries, you can change some 50 GB. Yes, you can do it, okay. So you get the machine. CentOS 7 with 20 GB of storage, select it. Next word. And if you want to allow some different uh, traffic, you can let me specify this, allow HTTP traffic, HTTPS traffic, okay? So these are your firewall rules. You can change these options. You can modify it. See here in this Google Cloud platform, what we selected, one is a machine name. I said CentOS machine. Next one, machine type. I just given the same uh, machine, default one, N1 standard one with one CPU, 3.75 GB of RAM. Next, I change the boot disk to CentOS. I just allow this traffic, okay? It is optional. If you need, you can allow it, okay? Then create. You can observe in a single slide, you have all these options. Okay, so it's going to launch a CentOS machine. Fine. The question, right, how to connect with the machine? How will you connect it? See, in, in, in Amazon Cloud, to connect to the machine, okay, they just use some uh, Git Bash, Git Bash interface, okay? So through Git Bash, we're connected. And I said, you can even connect with Putty. 
you can even try this putty no worries but in google cloud how to connect with the machine how you log in yes so you have an option here can you see this the center is machine is in running state and you get your zones and this machine can have this two different ip addresses private ip and public ip is a private ip and public public ip and it is ssh so if you want to connect with the machine you have an option ssh just select ssh can observe it will automatically connect your machine so we are not using any other interface are you following or not? we are not using any other third party interface we are not using it bash we are not using putty so it will automatically connects and even keys will create automatically can observe you are connected you are connected to centos machine how will confirm this centos machine what is the command we discuss cat etc yes os release so this is centos 7 machine and you have this machine in which cloud platform google cloud google cloud is it clear is it simple or not tell me how we'll do this how we launch instance in google cloud yeah create instance create instance instance name so what you need a machine for ansible make it ansible no worries machine for ansible ansible master i'll make it okay next one default standard one cpu 3.75 gb okay next let me go with i need ubuntu server i'll just go with ubuntu Ubuntu 16.04 machine with 10 GB of storage. So what we change here only a machine name is change and machine type is a boot disk is change. That's it. And this uh, traffic is optional. Okay, if you want, you can enable it. Okay, just do create. So with these simple steps, we can launch an instance in Google Cloud. Okay, and once it is launched, tell me how we'll connect. Yes, you have option here, SSH. Can you see? So what is the machine state? It is running, running instance, right? You have option SSH. I said you can select this option SSH and Google Cloud will use its own interface to connect. Just do SSH. Now can observe. So transferring as such keys. So keys will get automatically and you can connect it. Okay. So you can practice both. For next class, you can track practice both. So create your own Amazon cloud account, do practice. So if it is done, then create even Google cloud account, then practice. See, this is my Google cloud machine. Okay, it's the Ansible master. My machine name is Ansible Master. Okay. It's a Ubuntu machine. Is a Ubuntu. Are you following it or not? Okay. So any queries here? Yes, you have to create both. I said, right? For DevOps practice, you can create both. If it is done, even I'll tell you Azure Cloud also. Yeah, I'll tell you how to get a new account for Azure Cloud. Okay and you can launch instances. Okay. Yeah, tell me Prakash, yes. See, no need to use other interfaces. Okay, you can directly use, yes. Yeah, Git Bash is not required for Google Cloud. It's not required. You can directly connect. And you can even stop instances. Yeah, you can stop it. See, how we'll stop instances? Select it. 
we have option to stop and if we don't need further do remove again same thing it is in amazon cloud i discussed right in last class if you are not using machines you have to stop it but don't let the machine to run continuously select your machines and do stop same thing google cloud we can just select it we can stop or you can even delete terminate it okay yep and we have question here what is this private ip and public ip can you see there are different ip address right yes what there so when to use internal ip and external ip can observe this you have two different ip address right yes internal ip and external ip what is it yes if you see this internal ip is a private ip okay so you can access this ip just see this one you can observe this ip address here 10.128. okay yes we call like internal ip the difference is this internal ip you can use for internal node communication for example this ansible master want to interact with the centos machine if these two servers want to communicate then they can use a private ip okay private ip or internal ip or else we want to connect from uh, remote machines if you want to access from remote systems so then you have to use external ip external ip or public ip okay and here private ip is a static it won't change it won't change this ip addresses and go with public ip it's dynamic so when you restart your machines you shut down and start your machines this ips will get change okay this is clear to you so why we need this internal ip or private ip it is for internal node communications yes if these two nodes want to communicate you can use private ip and if you want to connect from outside you can use this option public ips so here i can use public ip right okay this is clear and how will confirm your machine ip address here see this uh, i have these two instances even amazon cloud can have this two ip address if you observe see your red hat machine can you find your ip address can you see this can you find your private ip and public ip yes or no so why we need private ip here it is for internal node communications yes this instance can interact with other instances using this regular private ip and public ip is to connect from remote locations okay yeah uh, how will confirm this ips here if you just see this command see the simple commands here set host name host name hyphen i i'll get my machine ip address okay host name hyphen f i'll get my machine what hyphen f denotes is a fully qualified host name yep and you have even other commands to get this ip address let me show this uh, i can use even ipa yes ip space a you'll get a machine ip addresses okay 
and you can even use a command if config using if config you'll find your ip address okay so you have different commands to get this ip address okay yes so for next class you can just launch your own machine and check your machine ip address is clear And you can even find some more simple commands here. You can just do some date command to get this current machine date, cal, and uh, if you want to see your disk space, df hyphen h. So what is the available space in this machine? What is user space? You'll get this complete details here, okay? And you can use even one more command called free, free command, free hyphen M. See this Google Cloud machine, what is the default uh, storage, default space, we got it, 3.5 GB, right? Okay, so you'll find a free space. So DF command will show you a secondary memory, secondary memory details, and free command will get your primary memory your RAM, RAM details, RAM and even swap usage. No worries, what is swap, how it works, we can discuss later, okay? So for the next class, your task is what? Create these two instances, okay? So once it's done, I, I will even uh, discuss with you how to connect with Putty, how to get access with Putty, okay? Yep. Yeah, from tomorrow we'll see some tools. We'll see, we'll start DevOps tools. Yep. 